there are a number of challenges facing us as a movement if we truly are to um, take the full advantage of these global changes that are moving in our direction. But firstly, a, a number of the challenges that we're facing. I think there's a challenge, the ongoing challenge of inclusivity and diversity. If volunteering for me is to mean anything, it has to be a movement that everybody who wants to get involved in can get involved in. And we still know from the statistics that that isn't the case. So we need to address the barriers, the institutional barriers, whether they're to do with CRB checks, whether they're to do with the Welfare Benefit Agency wrongly interpreting the guidance that is laid down, whether they're due to, due to challenges of image, um, whether they're due, due to challenges, uh, structural challenges within the volunteer involving world about physical access um, to volunteering. Then there's the challenge of investment. Um, volunteering is a hugely um, positive force for the economy. £40 billion pounds, um, it is worth. Um, it's also a hugely important economic resource for organisations in all of the sectors. My um, organisation carried out some research a couple of years ago to look at the ratio between investment in volunteering and output. And it showed that for every one pound invested by an organisation in volunteering, there was a national economic return of about seven or eight pounds. So a huge economic return. But we have to invest that one pound in order to release the seven or eight pounds. Volunteering is cost effective, it adds huge value, but it's not cost free. If we are to capitalise on the opportunity that we've got, if we really are to make the most of this perhaps once in a generation opportunity to really make that sea change that we all want to the world of volunteering, then we have to have a properly sustainable, modernised infrastructure, particularly at local and regional level, that will help us to deliver that. And I think that's a challenge for government. It's also a challenge for the volunteering movement to make the case more strongly than perhaps we have done in the past. There's also a challenge, I think, about, and this is a slight paradox, it's a challenge about, on the one hand, holding dear to our core values about volunteering, and I make no apology at all, but as Chief Executive of Volunteering England, I will be campaigning very hard if there are attempts to dilute the core values of volunteering, which are around an activity that is free for people to choose to get involved in, it's not compulsory, and it's not undertaken primarily for economic um, gain. But, and here's the paradox and the challenge, that doesn't mean that we can afford to be complacent, that we don't have to rise to the challenge of changing times, that we don't have to adapt our practices in order to make volunteering more attractive and more accessible and more relevant to a different age. And if I can just give you one example of a debate which I think needs to be opened, um, and it's the debate around private residential care. And today, over 80% of um, places within um, residential care are within the private sector, and yet for historical, for cultural, for traditional reasons, there's no very little tradition of volunteering within that sector. Um, and if I could just say a word or two from a very personal experience about why this um, has come to me to be something that I think encapsulates that um, need for us to think outside the box. My father-in-law, um, who died four years ago after fighting a very brave battle against Parkinson's disease, um, entered a, an NHS rehabilitation centre after he'd had a stroke and had the most fantastic care. The most brilliant care from the nurses, but also the most brilliant care from a volunteer team led by an indefatigable character with a brilliant name by, I kid you not, Tony Blair. And it wasn't me, Tony Blair. Um, Tony Blair was still in power then and he hadn't yet got off to do his Middle East envoy role. But this Tony Blair in decorum in Hertfordshire led the volunteer team and he was just magnificent. He came in every day after work. Um, he um, had a glass of beer with some of the guys, and they, they watched the football, he played the piano. Um, he, he wasn't replacing paid staff at all. The nurses and the, and the medical staff could see the value of Tony and his team. When he recovered from his stroke sufficiently enough to go into um, residential care, he sold the family home and went into a private residential care home. And again, I can't fault the care that he got from the staff. Absolutely fantastic but no tradition of volunteering, nobody coming in as a friend, nobody coming in to talk about the football, nobody coming in to share a story. And I think that whilst coming back to my core values versus thinking more creatively and changing with the times, whilst absolutely we have to hold fast to the notion that people shouldn't be volunteering for private profit, and I wouldn't expect to see volunteers in private residential care homes serving the, 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 the lunches or doing the cleaning, I think the notion of volunteers not being in private residential care as a friend seems to be something that we can't um, allow.